want to welcome you to this service of witness to the resurrection. In our tradition, this is not a service of, of darkness. It's not a service of, of gloom or despair. It's a service of light. It's a service of, of life. And so we celebrate in that way. So I want to welcome you here on behalf of the family uh, to, to celebrate and to honor a life well lived, uh, Walter Smith. And in this service, you're going to find that it has been uh, scripted quite well by the family. It's lovely as a pastor when they, somebody has put the whole service together, and it's quite easy to follow. So uh, this has been uh, particularly organized by Walter and Charlotte uh, so that it, it'll bear their, their fingerprint as we go through. And I hope you will, en you will enjoy that. Uh, as we begin today, I want to encourage you to join with us in the hymns. Uh, the hymns come out of two different hymn books, and we have both of those in the pews. If you're familiar with our church, there's a purple hymn book and a red hymn book, so there'll be uh, hymns out of both. You can also follow along on the screen, so that makes it easier for you to do. So I encourage you to participate along with us as we celebrate this witness to the resurrection. So let us begin with the call to worship. If you would respond where it says all in your bulletin, or this may also appear on the screens. Our help is in the name of the Lord. In heaven and earth. So praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Would you join me in prayer? Lord God, we come to you in this moment of, of mixed emotions and mixed feelings. On one hand, we come with a bit of sadness, and that is uh, wrapped in grief over the, the fact that somebody we love and care for is no longer physically present with us. We also come to you in a moment of celebration, knowing that this life we live is just a blink of an eye, and there's, there's an eternity waiting, and especially eternity waiting in your arms. So, Lord, walk with us today as we, as we wade through this paradox of life and death, of tears and laughter, tragedy and blessings. And we ask that your spirit would just weave through these emotions that might bind us together as you bind us together in your grace. We do turn to you. There are places in our lives, there are, there are empty places that only you can fill. And so we're reminded by that, we're reminded by the, the symbols and the sights in this place, Lord. You, you give us those traditions to, to assure us of your presence, of a history and of a future. So we would ask that you be with us as we walk both down those nice glades of grass, but also through some of the shadow valleys. And in that process, we pray you help us understand your word that we hear today that we can receive that with believing hearts. And as we do that, we hear promises that lift us up out of grief, out of doom. They lift us into life, into the light of your presence through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And it is in his name we pray. Amen. A uh, very familiar, uh, if you're a child of the 70s, you'll, you'll recognize this piece of scripture from Ecclesiastes. It was made into a song, but some of us on the church side of things know this out of Ecclesiastes. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, and it does talk about seasons. We all have seasons in our life, as I talked about, sometimes things weave in and out, and so the Word of God also recognizes that, so I share this with you now. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. There's a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war, 
and a time for peace. And there's no greater way to enter into that peace than to pray the prayer Jesus taught us. So I encourage you to join me in that prayer, the Lord's Prayer, in whatever tradition you have uh, learned it. And we'll share that together as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Amen. Some of us in this room have been to Israel, and I remember my, I think it was my second trip to Israel, driving through some of the little villages, and I noticed this phenomena of uh, there would be a home, and the homes were made out of uh, like poured concrete, and they had these pillars with uh, rebar sticking up out of the top, what we would consider the roof, and I thought that was so strange, and I asked the driver, uh, what what is that about? Could they just not afford to finish the top story? And he says, no, that's for when the son gets married. Because when the son gets married, he comes home to his father's house, and they build a, another story on. So maybe, maybe that tradition has its roots in a bit of scripture today. And I want to share that with you out of uh, it's John 14. As you hear this, it is a very familiar bit of scripture, but it does talk about how God doesn't just plant us here and become aloof and back away, but walks with us all the way. And in fact, it, when we think is the end of things in our life, it's actually the beginning because that's when the Lord reaches in and grabs us and holds us and carries us to that place, I guess like those homes in Jerusalem, where another addition is being added on. So if we're worried today about people that leave us uh, for whatever reason in these days of COVID, some too soon, some a life well lived like Walter, if you're concerned about what happens when that time comes, Jesus says this, set your troubled hearts at rest. Trust in God always. Trust also in me. There are many dwellings in my father's house. If it were not so, I should have told you, for I'm going there on purpose to prepare a place for you. And if I go and I prepare that place for you, I shall come again and receive you to myself, so that where I am, you may also be. And my way there is known to you. So I imagine Jesus teaching this to the disciples. He knows that his, his three and a half years of ministry are going to end. He, he has a very good idea of how that ending will come. And he knows he's going to be leaving behind his family and friends, that, that's those people that have been traveling along. And so he doesn't want them to be worried. He wants to give them some encouragement that when he leaves, it's not, it's not a terrible thing. In fact, where he's going is a wonderful place, and it will be the same for all of those who have faith in God through Jesus Christ. He says those words, I'm going away to prepare a place, kind of like that extra story, you know, in Israel. I'm going to prepare this place, and Thomas is just like us. I love it when somebody in the Bible is just like us. He's not the wisest. He's not the smartest. He, he's kind of wondering. He's searching through life, and he goes, okay, Jesus, I hear what you say about going away and coming back and getting me or going to the fathers. I, okay, I don't, I, I don't get it still. How does it work? You said the way is known, and I don't understand way. So if you've ever asked that question, here's Jesus's answer to those of us that are like Thomas. He, sa he says, Lord, we, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus so simply says, you don't need to worry about any of this because I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. I'll take you to my father. He's saying, I'll take you to my father's house. One of the reasons we can celebrate Walter Smith today is because the words of Jesus have come true for him. He's been taken to his father's house that had been waiting for him all along. I'm going to ask if you would uh, stand if you're able as we sing. It is titled, O Lord My God. 
you know this better as How Great Thou Art. It's found in the Purple Hymnal 625. If you prefer just to sing out and off the screen, we encourage you to do that too.
You may be seated. If you notice the, uh, the lyrics in the hymn, How Great Thou Art, it talks about nature and beauty and seeing the wonderful things in creation. And that's something that both Walter and Charlotte loved to do. If you know about the RV travels to North Carolina and, and seeing the wonders there. And I learned also that Walter uh, uh, attended a camp there, I guess, when he was younger. Maybe, and, and always was drawing him back. I'm getting a nod, so I must have gotten that part right. So, it's by no coincidence that one of the psalms that's been chosen to be read today has to do with nature, but it has to do with nature in a very interesting way in that when we look out and we look out at the wonder, some, we get beautiful sunsets here in Florida. Or if you're coming from the mountains and you see the wonderful views, if you're from the top of a mountain looking down, and we often find ourselves kind of in awe over that and wondering about creation. So it's interesting that the psalmist writes about the wonders of creation, how beautiful they are, but then in comparison to God, it's a bit of a different story. So listen to these words out of Psalm 121. I look up to the mountains. Does my strength come from mountains? No. My strength comes from God who made heaven and who made earth, and by the way, who also made the mountains. He won't let you stumble. Your guardian God won't fall asleep, not on your life. Israel's guardian will never doze, will never sleep. God is your guardian right by your side to protect you, sheltering you from sunstroke, sheltering you from moonstroke. God guards you from every evil. He guards your very life. He guards you when you leave and he guards you when you return. He guards you now. And he guards you always. Which means in life, we have a companion walking with us all the way, encouraging us to fight. And if anybody knows about Walter and Charlotte, and you know about the bell ringing, the Salvation Army, uh, you know that that was one of the things that they both participated in and were quite uh, supportive of. So today we are going to sing a hymn that does talk about uh, being a Christian soldier in the sense of good fight for Christ, which means caring, it means taking care of folks that need help, it means ringing a bell sometimes. So you can remain seated as we sing Onward Christian Soldiers. It's in the red hymnal, number uh, uh, 617. You can also follow along on the screens if you wish.
So I just as a little, I uh, just want to check in with you. I said Walter was very uh, involved with the Salvation Army. If you ever rang a bell for the Salvation Army, especially uh, having to do with Markham Woods Presbyterian Church or with uh, Walter Smith, would you stand up? I thought so. Please be seated. Yes, you can give so that's why, that's why uh, one of the reasons Walter received an award, it was called uh, the Salvation Army's Mrs. Ralph Austin Smith Community Service Award, uh, for the kinds of legacies like that. And he was named a life member of the Salvation Army um, Advisory Board and often went on those times when you give away the toys and gifts. So legacies, what we do matters in a ripple effect among people. And so in one sense, you did become uh, Walter Smith's army marching on, right? So we want to share a little bit about, uh, about Walter Smith today, and we're going to do this tandem, Jody and I. Uh, most of you recently uh, coming to Markham Woods, 5, 10, 15 years, you know Walter and Charlotte and fixtures right over there, right by you, Bob. That's the spot. You know, people have their spots, so uh, and we could always see those folks on a Sunday morning. And even as Walter's uh, physical issues began to uh, increase, he was here. He came as often as possible. And I think if COVID hadn't hit, he probably would have been coming right toward, toward the close of his time walking on this earth. So for those of us who only know Walter Smith by his interactions here, at, uh, either through the Salvation Army or through Markham Woods Presbyterian Church, we want to share a little bit more about uh, Walter Meads Smith. He was born November 30th, 1928 to Ralph Austin and Charlotte Meads Smith in Miami Beach, Florida. He grew up in Sanford and was uh, in 1946 graduate from Seminole High School. Any folks here that went to Seminole High School? There you go. You got a few right here. The legacy continues. He was active in the Key Club, Spanish Club, uh, school plays, and the, the Teen Club. I don't think they have that anymore. But uh, do they have the Teen Club? Emily, you're the latest. Right? No, okay. No, the Teen Club is not there. But uh, he was a yearbook editor, and he played on the school's football team. To get in shape for the approaching high school football season, Walter and some of his buddies they laid railroad ties on the spur line between Sanford and Oviedo. Isn't that interesting? Uh, their supervisor would frequently tell the boys to slow down because they were outpacing the supply of the ties, right? So, so during one summer uh, when in college, Walter and his buddies uh, uh, followed the wheat harvest. This is a curious one. A wheat harvest from Texas to the upper Middle West. And that summer made a lasting impression on Walter, who often talked about it. Sometimes when Walter and Ralph's grandparents were going back to Mississippi, they would take the two boys with them. And it was a long trip with Granddaddy Meads driving at a steady 40 miles per hour between Sanford and Meridian. 
How long would that take, right? But the highlight of the trip was eating Granny Mead's lettuce and tomato sandwiches. For the vegetarians among us, how healthy is that? Walter was an Eagle Scout, and he also attended the University of Georgia, where he received a BA, actually uh, received a BA from University of Alabama, where he was a member of Lambda Chi Alpha. It would be remiss of me not to recall Walter's wearing his University of Alabama finest at certain times of the year in this congregation. After college, he was a Radio Times salesman for WABB and an insurance agent in Mobile, Alabama. Walter served in both active duty and reserves in the U.S. Air Force. He was information officer for the 14th Air Force headquarters at Warner Robins Air Force Base in Georgia during the Korean conflict. During the Cuban Missile Crisis, he was recalled to active duty as wing information officer, 435th Troop Carrier Wing at Homestead Air Force Base. He produced radio programs and surveys and conducted public relations for the Air Force. After the Cuban Missile Crisis, Walter was employed by Burger King Corporation as a national marketing supervisor. Oh, did he come up with the whole King thing? No, I'm just, just wondering. Okay. Uh, he was also uh, in, um, he, he wrote the first self-help franchise manual. He was also employed by International Industries, IHOP, and Orange Julius as Southeast Operations Coordinator, training personnel and opening and supervising restaurants in several southern and northeastern states. When he returned to Sanford in 1983, he was employed as a real estate agent before his retirement. Walter truly uh, lived by the mantra, it is printed in the bulletin today, service is the rent we pay for our time on earth. He was always willing to help others whenever there was a need. He didn't know how to say no, he was a member and past chair of the advisory, as we said, advisory board of the Salvation Army, uh, who gave him that award, which I mentioned earlier. He spent many hours, as we did too, ringing the bells during the kettle drives. He was a member, past secretary, and past president of the Seminole County Historic Society, uh, member uh, of, of the uh, office, officer of the Lake Monroe Sam's RV chapter, and we know all about the RV travels, mostly. I, didn't, I never saw Walter drive the RV. It was always Charlotte driving the RV, but maybe he drove it in the earlier days. I'm not sure. Yeah, part of that good Sam Club member and, uh, of the Sanford Historic Trust. For several years, he was the precinct clerk during local, state, and national emergencies. He was a member of the Sanford Seminole County uh, Chamber, where he was recognized as Ambassador of the Year. The city of Sanford recognized him with the Philip James Gunster Community Service Award and the Lifetime Volunteer Achievement Award. You know, I'm noting that he was a member of Sanford Historic Trust just last Saturday. They held an event where you got to tour folks' backyards and their gardens. And uh, that was the first time I was aware of that organization's existence. Did they do that back in his day, I wonder? Yeah, so um, he has touched this community in so many ways including as a member of the Sanford Kiwanis Club, where he served as president in 1992 and 93, and from 2004 to 2007, and then he was secretary in 2008 and 9. He was recognized as Kiwanian of the Year in 1991, and a distinguished Kiwanian in 94, 96, 97, and 98. He received the Distinguished President Award several times. He served as lieutenant governor in 95 and 96, in 2001 and 02. He was a George Hickson Fellow. Walter and Charlotte liked to travel, as we know. They visited all 50 states and six provinces of Canada, usually in the motor home. Walter was a devoted husband and was always supportive of the various activities Charlotte was involved in and offices that she held. Walter was an active member of Markham Woods Presbyterian Church, was both an ordained elder and deacon of the Presbyterian Church USA. So I don't need to tell you that this year of COVID has been hard. It's very, been very hard for folks that go in the hospital and, and folks that have had loss. Because when somebody has a loss during this time, you often, you couldn't be together like we are today. Uh, and so when, when uh, death happens during COVID, it is uh, exacerbated, uh, you know, the emotions of it all. So that's some of what this family has been through. Because for Brett and Charlotte, within the, the last five weeks, both their mother and now their father have, have passed away. 
So for all those folks that have been dealing with these struggles during the, uh, the, the lockdown of COVID, our prayers go out and, and extra uh, graces fall on those families that have had to go through these times in these times. And considering, you know, just what we've gone through in the past year and the life that we are celebrating, the legacy that he left behind, it reminds us that we all walk with Jesus who clung to the old rugged cross. And we will celebrate that difficulty as we share it. I invite you to sing now that hymn, which is in the red hymnal number 256. We'll remain seated for this hymn.
Our next scripture selection comes from Paul's letter to the community at Corinth. This is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I know we're often accustomed to hearing this passage in the context of weddings. So it's interesting to read this in a different context, that one of another type of wedding, a wedding of one of the saints of God to Christ through his church. Let us dwell on the words of love that Paul shared with the community at Corinth as we hear this chapter, verses 1 through 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide these three, and the greatest of these is love. Friends, this is the word of the Lord, and in our worship services we say thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together for all the saints.
I'm going to ask you to remain standing and to invite you to read along Scripture together. Let us meditate on that famous psalm, Psalm 23, as it appears in the King James Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Please be seated. It was so interesting to see um, this lovely designed service from Walter and Charlotte uh, to include so many scripture readings and so many hymns, celebrated hymns of the faith, ones that Let's be honest, we don't sing in Sunday as much, at least in this congregation anymore. So I know that some of you are particularly pleased by that. And it calls to mind the importance for all of us to prepare for a day when we are not here, when we will no longer be among family and friends, at least not as we are now. It is good for you to prepare for that day. I know a lot of us don't like to think about death. We have this cultural taboo associated with it. But in our tradition, we say death is merely a door to eternal life. It's good to have a well-decorated door, I think, isn't it, friends? Walter and Charlotte have certainly decorated their doors well today. And as we sing this closing hymn, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, we remember that Jesus is there on the other side of the door, ready for us to come through. Let us sing together. Friends, let us pray. God, you have filled this place with your spirit even as we prepare to celebrate the unleashing of the Holy Spirit on the first church on the day of Pentecost tomorrow in this space and in many other spaces. That spirit is wild and will often lead us into places that may make us uncomfortable including into places we'd rather not think about, places like transitions from life to death. That spirit has carried Walter through the door. That spirit will carry us through the door as well. We call on your Holy Spirit to help us prepare to die a good death, to celebrate well, to prepare for families and friends so that in their grief they may not have to make such difficult decisions. 
It is good to be prepared as we Presbyterians pride ourselves on doing things decently and in order. We have celebrated, yes, decently, yes, in order, but also with a spirit of promise, a spirit of hope, a testimony that service is the rent we pay for our time on earth. We give you thanks for Walter's enduring legacy, especially that reminder. Help us all to have the hearts of Christ, the hands and feet of Christ, as we seek to serve a broken and fearful world. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, hear what is listed in your bulletin as a benediction, which means good words. It is also a blessing that comes to us from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. The God of peace who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus make you complete in everything good so that you may do God's will, working among us that which is pleasing in God's sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Alleluia. Amen. behalf of the family to join them in Anderson Hall. There's a lovely meal that's been prepared. I ask that you wait and let the family uh, make their way across, and then you can follow. Uh, you're, you're welcome to take a seat and begin eating as the food is served. <laughs> 